distress. But we now need to step up as a nation. We now need to do something more than actually just being there. It is time to recognize. For too long, for too long we have resisted that. We always find excuses for inertia and inaction. Now is the time for us to start to be brave and actually reward the people that are doing the things that we as a nation ask them to do. Somaliland does not live in the easiest of neighbourhoods. It has difficult neighbours. But being a democratic country, being a country that wants to educate its boys and its girls by having a judicial system that is fair and robust, these are things that we need to be rewarding. This is what we need to be putting on a pedestal to say, this is an example that we want others to follow. Madam Deputy Speaker, I say that if a government is not going to take the action that is required, let it be the British House of Commons that takes the lead. Let it be the House of Commons that leads the way. If the FCDO is deaf, let us show what the will is for us to recognise what is a nation, a country which has its own processes of judiciary, it has its elections, it has every function of a democratic nation that we want to see. So if the government is reluctant to do it, let this house do it. Yeah, yeah. Let us make sure that we reward those who are doing what is needed and is required. As we look at Somaliland, you see a country that is developing. You see a country that has got investment coming into it. And I'd like to thank the British government for the investment in Berb Report, the investment on the uh, highway north to Hargeza. But by the simple act of recognition, you can transform the lives of 5.7 million people, making every single one of them more prosperous, enabling Somaliland, a good ally of this country, to play a bigger world on the world a role on the world stage and play a vital role in supporting the values that we in this House hold dear. Madam Deputy Speaker, I know that it may seem a very far off way a very far off place. I recognise that maybe a nation of 5.7 million people does not seem significant to Britain, but it is significant. It plays a pivotal role in terms of Africa, and I urge this House to take the action that is required to support the Republic of Somaliland and make sure that we deliver for the people of Somaliland as they have defended what we value so dearly, which is democracy and freedom. The question is that the right honourable member have leave to bring in the bill. As may as that opinion say aye. aye. Of the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Who will prepare and bring in the bill? Uh, Mr Clive Betts, Sir Robert Buckland, Dr Lisa Cameron, Alan Cairns, John Speller, Ian Paisley, Alex Shelbrook, Paul Blomfield, Alexander Stafford, Kim Johnson and myself, Madam Deputy Speaker. Sir Gavin Williamson. Republic of Somaliland Recognition Bill. Second reading, what day? Friday the 24th of November, Madam Friday the 24th of November. Thank you. And now we proceed to the motion on the estimate for the Department for Work and Pensions. I call the Minister to move the motion formally. I beg to move. Uh, the question is, as on the order paper, and the debate will be opened by the Chair of the Work and Pensions Select Committee, Sir Stephen Timms. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. I'm very grateful to have been granted today's debate about DWP spending. I want to focus in my remarks in particular on universal credit. 
whose rollout started 10 years ago this year in 2013. But DWP is forecast to have, by some considerable margin, the highest expenditure of any government department, £279.3 billion pounds, uh, this financial year, followed by the Department of Health and Social Care at £201 billion. So it's a, by a considerable distance the, the largest. Uh, of course, the DWP forecast is uncertain. Almost all its funding counts as annually managed expenditure, hard to forecast demand-led spending. DWP's admin spending, the resource Dell, is 27% lower in real terms this year than it was in 2010-11. Um, but universal credit spending is forecast to be £50.8 billion pounds this financial year, which is £8.8 .8 billion higher than forecast in these estimates last year, reflecting both the, the recent uh, much-needed uprating and also a higher caseload. In February, uh, 4.5 million households were receiving universal credit payments. One of the key arguments in the business case for universal credit was the prospect of re 